Yes, we are rolling. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Be Rich. It's me and Anand recording remotely from Tirchi. So this is the first time I'm trying to do this when I'm recording on my iPhone uh, with Anand on one side, me and the other. We're trying to do this dual camera thing. I hope the audio is all right. And I do hope the video is okay too. If not, bear with us. Tomorrow, hopefully, my crew will land up in Tirchi and we'll substantially improve audio and video quality. If it is okay and it's possible, give me a thumbs up. So that gives me a bit of hope and relief that in future, if I'm jammed up, I can definitely rely on this. Anyway, getting back to the point, there was some interesting news that came out from Google. Sundar Pichai had put out a tweet or I think a post and even Elon Musk has said this is some good news. And I thought we can unpack this with Anand and understand why this is important news, not for Google, not for computing, not for AI, but as investors, why we should look at this news and it will help us understand why Anand has been saying what he's been saying about AI. So Anand, I'm sure you've read the news about... Yeah, see, first thing you have to understand is computers is you work in bits and bytes. Your bits is a situation where a zero or a one, right? So it can exist for nearly two states, zero or one. So that gives you a finite set of possibilities, a large finite number of set of possibilities. So people are again talking about quantum computing. Quantum physics is when an electron neither is in zero or one and keeps moving with qubits. Is qubits. So this is called qubits. Q U B I T S. Yeah. These qubits people have been trying to master and put it into computing. They have not succeeded in peak day. Because information is scrambled, you have to understand how it is scrambled and unscrambled it. And normally this has been here up. Now, Google has called its quantum computing chip called as Wikiup. Yes. Now what they claim in a paper is that they have a 105 qubit processor, processor which can process data at 13,000 things faster than the super clock. fastest known supercomputer. What is AI? A is scraping large amounts of data, processing it and giving it to you in a brush. Imagine a computer which is able to do it 13,000 times faster than what it can do. Current, currently. Currently. Like it's like if you open a bottle, mouth to drink water, you can open only as large as you can. Imagine and it is 15 or 20 whales together opening the mouth to yeah. Not one way. Yeah. 15 to 20 whales mop a vein the size of 15 times opening its mop. So it is swallow a lot many bottles of water before you can even think of sipping. think of sipping it. So the answers will come in a jiffy. This can do a lot of calculations. Complex calculations. Complex calculations which can even constrict molecules. This so it has a huge impact on a huge impact on pharmacy, pharmacy research, pharmaceutical research. Any form of research. Any form of research. It can. Basically, you don't have to do the experiments. Real, you Real. can simulate on the much more simulators, more powerful simulators will be available. Sundar Pichai is the paper is talking, the paper he referred to is talking of molecular biology and molecular chemistry. Yes. But this will have wide ranging effects on a lot of things. There are three companies which are now developing cube quantum computing. One is Google, which is supposedly a right. Then there is Microsoft and then there is Amazon. Yeah. Today they are running mad behind NVIDIA, all of us. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now NVIDIA is making chips for GPUs and GPUs, graphic processing units. Imagine if three companies launch qubits, what will happen to NVIDIA? It, once it becomes commercially viable. Maybe NVIDIA is making its own qubits. We don't know, yes. So, we know that artificial intelligence will become big in 20 years. But we do not know at this point of time who are the winners and who are the losers. Correct. And which technology will actually... And which is the technology that will survive in the long term. True. Right? So, and it is not within my circle of competence. So, I do not know where to invest, but how to invest. I use the Google ecosystem. My office uses Workspace. They have this drives. Google so has... Right, right now, talking in Twitchy, they will load this in a Google Drive. We know will load it in a Google Drive where his team will download it and watch it. Yeah. I use Google Search. I use Google Maps. We use YouTube. In We run the entire organization on YouTube. Yeah. 
friends. I connect with my people on YouTube. I use Gmail. So I, un I understand the Google ecosystem. And when there was bad news, I put money in Google. Because I'm using it daily. We use the AdSense also. Yes. So we are using Google daily. I'm not buying a promise of the future. I'm buying the present. Correct. The earnings today. The cash flow of today. Similarly, I use Amazon to order a lot of books. My wife uses Amazon for shopping. I am in the Amazon system. If the price corrects, I will buy an Amazon product share. Not at today's valuation. Same thing is true for Microsoft. Same thing is true for Microsoft. My nephew used to love playing with Xbox. I have used Windows and Windows Explorer before Google. Everybody uses MS Office, Excel and Photoshop. So I understand Google. I understand Microsoft. People, you talk about SQL. So we understand the Microsoft system. Right? Unfortunately, and if it so happens that Microsoft is the winner, I would also like to own Microsoft. Prince talks in a key. Microsoft is too costly today. And I have not had the window of opportunity to buy Microsoft. The other one is Apple through Berkshire. I own a small portion of Apple. So, and I have bought Apple many years ago. So, basically what we are doing is hedging our bets. If I own Google, Amazon, Microsoft and Apple, surely one of them is going to hit a home run when it comes to the And both Amazon and Google have already deployed their chips, some of their chips. With Anthropy, incidentally, Anthropy and Google announced the deal. Yes. Which I was referring to you sometime, right? Yeah. The deal is worth $50 billion. Yeah, a few days back we spoke about it. Anthropy is a, a group of people who have left OpenAI about a year or two back and started a business. And it's the fastest growing AI company. Yes. But nobody talks about Anthropy. If I own Microsoft, I own you. OpenAI. So what you have to understand is you should know how to hedge your pets and understand the business well and invest in that business. Sundar Pichai understands AI. I incidentally own Sundar Pichai because of other reasons and therefore I own up skies of AI. That is how you should invest. Rather than blindly because somebody told you, you go and put your money in AI. Correct. This is what it is. This is all. You should invest within your circle of competence. Yes, there may be people who are listening to me who are more competent than me in this matter. They can directly invest in EA. But for the they man like Neil, they know this is the best method. So yeah. these are not this like this is for people who are non EA and who want to be a part of the action. This gives you a slice of the cake and you can eat it. Hey guys, go. So this is a what the advice Anand always says, stay in a circle of competence and then you can find out ways and means to leverage your circle of competence, relying on what is inside your circle and still learn to explore a bit outside. And I hope this kind of resonates with you when you're thinking about AI. So this is a way you should look at and strategize when you see all this AI and you're having FOMO. This is a way you can look out to hedging your bets on AI. So thanks for joining us today. Like I said in the beginning, this is recorded remotely on my iPhone. We'll try and do better for you tomorrow. Thanks for being with me and Anand today on Beerage. See you tomorrow with another one. Thank you.